OK, now you can tune the X reads in exactly the same way as you do with normal reads. Um, and you can tune them, you can fine tune them for your preference, or you can tune them quite radically. So, um, for instance, let's look at hole number seven, which is a G blow and an A draw. So I can bend the A down to the um, G sharp. Now, if I want to bend the G down to the F sharp, the X read kicks in. It's an, actually a, a, an F draw read. So let's look at that F draw read in hole number seven. Um, if you actually want to get the pitch of it, you have to um, raise it slightly in the reed plate, push it out slightly, let's zoom in a bit more, and then, um, and then we can test the actual pitch of it against a tuner. So let's put the tuner in there. Um, now to do that you need to put your finger over the, the, over the normal active reed in hole number seven, which is an A note. At the moment we've got two notes, so just close down the, your finger over the A note and you'll just hear the X read. Let's turn the tuner on. <laughs> so you can see that's pretty well at an F. Now that'll give you quite a deep bend on the, on the G. It means we can bend, the, bend the, uh, the G almost down to an F. Uh, we only really want the F-sharp, but we can go below the F-sharp if we want to. So let me just demonstrate that again. So here's your G-blow. There's the F-sharp. And we can go below. So we can really go below. I mean, personally, I prefer it that way because it means you can then you can bend into that F-sharp. put vibrato on it and stuff. But if you're having trouble bending in tune and going too flat all the time, you can actually raise the pitch of that X reed to suit yourself. You can actually, um, let's move it up again. Um, you can um, just put the probe in there and you can sharpen the pitch of that X reed. Um, let's just do it quickly with a little rubber buffer. Okay, now let's just check the pitch of that X reed. Again, I'll put tuner down there. That was about F before. Let's see what it is now. It's still an F, but it's a bit sharper on the F. Let's move it up a bit more. And let's just double check again. So that's, that's kind of like a flat F sharp now. So now if I try bending that G down, let's put the X read back in its um, position um, with the negative gap. Now if I bend the G, I won't be able to bend nearly so far as before. The very bottom of the bend is slightly below the F sharp. So it just means that if you want to get that F-sharp really in tune without having to use your ear, <laughs> you can basically tune the X-reads um, to about, I don't know, 50 cents below the, um, the, the pitch of the, um, the, the note you're aiming for. And then that'll mean that when you bend down to the floor of the bend, you'll get the semitone. Um, personally, I like them a bit flatter because um, not only bending to the floor of the bend is not so that good for the reeds, and also it doesn't give you as much... Um, soul and stuff on the bent note, I think. I like to be able to bend it below the pitch of the, um, the semitone. Um, but that's just kind of really up to personal choice, really. It's just to show that um, you can really tune the X reads to your own personal preference. You don't have to stick with uh, the way they're tuned as, as they come from us. Now, if you want to, you can actually radically retune your X reads to give you some very, very um, big bends. This is just might be for a special effect, or you might just prefer having bigger bends than the semitone that um, comes as stock. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, back in the 1980s, I um, pioneered the use of um, blue tack, which is that kind of stuff that you um, um, stick pictures on the wall with. I pioneered it as a kind of a reversible tuning uh, compound for harmonica reeds. So here I've got a little bit, bit of blue tack, and I'm just going to cut a bit off with my uh, screwdriver, and then stick it on the end of that F read that we were working on before. Um, 
just kind of um, massage it on so it stays on there. You'd be amazed how well this stuff sticks. I mean, I've got it on harmonicas that are 30 years old and it's still there, um, which is before most of you were born, I should imagine. But I mean, it just stays there forever. Um, but it can also just be removed in a second if you want it to. OK, so that was an F note. Now let's see what we've got. Let's get the tuner again. So let's uh, put our finger over the over the active um, reed. To, it doesn't sound, and just suck on that F reed on that X that X reed. So that's gone down to just below an E flat. Now that means that um, we've got a G blow and an E flat draw. So we should be able to bend um, down from a G now down to an E. So let's put that X reed back in its slot so it acts as an X reed. So I've just given it that negative gap again. Now let's blow, try and blow that G, that G note and, and get the tuner again. Okay, here we go. So it's taken it almost all the way from a G down to, a, to an E flat. And you can see you could do that on all your reeds if you want to. Um, I think the, the, you know, obviously for the chroma bender to play chromatically, the most useful uh, tuning is the one that we that we give you. Um, but you know, if you're um, interested in making a, an instrument of your own tuning and your own uh, that performs in a in a way that um, suits you for maybe a special purpose or a new tuning that you've got in mind, you can configure the chroma bender quite radically different to um, the way it comes from us. Now when the chroma bender is um, uh, assembled in the factory, we ask them to put a little bit of sealing um, grease between the mouthpiece and the comb. Um, but if you just want to um, double check that, you can um, easily remove the mouthpiece um, just with these two um, outer screws. Now just make sure that the mouthpiece, when you take it off, you remember which way around it was and where it is on the comb because that's critical. If you don't put it back the same way, um, the, the comb dividers and the mouthpiece dividers won't line up. So it's very important to um, put it back the same way. Okay, so this one does actually have some sealing grease there, which is great. Um, but if you want to sort of boost that or um, make it even more airtight, you can just get some Vaseline um, like that or some that sort of chapstick stuff. Just wipe a bit on your finger like that and then just dab it on the comb like this and um, it'll just give an extra bit of seal, a kind of a gasket between the, the mouthpiece and the comb, which is good for air tightness. So I'm putting the mouthpiece back on there and then um, just make sure to put it back the same way it came off and put the two screws on. Don't over tighten these screws, just make sure they're sort of finger tight. And this just gives you the extra assurance that your um, chroma bender will be, you know, absolutely airtight at this um, crucial point of the mouthpiece. Okay, so now you just reassemble the covers and you're good to go.